All right, let's go ahead and unbox this guy. It's a nice big box too, bigger than uh, most motoroids. So let's get to it. All right, first thing, first thing, the manual, a bunch of runners, and what's this? Oh, nice! Look at that. The skirt is molded in one piece, which I was very surprised about because I assumed that there was just going to be a seam line right here that I would have to sand and reshape, but no, oh, this is awesome. This is big, dude. This is a big model. You can only imagine how big it is when it's finished. And let's see, we got some feet. All right. So right off the bat, it's going to be Seamline City for this bad boy. It's going to be a lot of seam lines, and we got some pre-colored parts, which is pretty common for motorized. And uh, let's see, very detailed. It's nice. Uh, should be a uh, very nice. Oh, they, they painted some gold parts. Okay, so we got some gold to deal with, which is always fun. What else we got? Oh, here we go. The money maker. I love when these motorways come with figures because that you get more bang for your buck. Yeah, I don't know why Gundams don't come with the 120 figures anymore. If they could just make them look like this, it'd be great. So we have Jinrei and then we have Daisuke. Daisuke? I forgot. I think his name is Daisuke. Or oh, I'm messing that up and I'll get corrected on the comments. It's all right. So yeah, these I painted these before. These are nice. These are really nice and pretty easy to paint because all part separation, you know, not a, not a lot of masking. You do a lot of hand painting with these too, and uh, that's a nice trick. I'll show you guys how to do these also. So this video will be a, a lot longer than the standard ones, so uh, just bear with me and I hope I, you learn a lot. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start snapping this model and then I'll let you know if, I'm gonna, if there's any, like, any like, uh, things I can teach you. So let's uh, go ahead and start building this bad boy. So we're going to start with the head. And if you notice that, you're going to have to put these two pieces together and lock the face in. Because you're going to have to glue and remove that seam line that's the back of the head. So I'll show you a little trick I do. This side work also do with like on the models and pretty much any model if, if, if it's there. So here's, how, here's what I did. So you put the two heads, and then what you want to do is you kind of cut that out, dig that out. I use a hobby knife, a nice sharp hobby knife, and then dig it out. Just don't cut your fingers open, please. And then this will help me slide the face like so. And I can remove the face easily. So this way I can focus when I paint the face. I can focus on detail in the face up because I want to add some details to it. And then here it will be easier for me to remove these little mold line here, seam line here, here, and I got this big ugly one in the back. And that's what I don't like. <laughs> that was me, that was a mistake, but uh, these pre-colored parts, it's just going to look awful. So, let's get rid of the seam line. So put the face to the side, and this is how we remove seam lines. kind of want to open it up just a little bit, kind of like that. And get your camera extra thin. What you want to do is kind of want to get the applicator inside the piece like that. Do like two or three passes of the glue. Okay, that's enough glue. You want to really fill it up. And then what you want to do is you want to squeeze together as hard as you can. Squeeze as hard as you can. This way the glue pushes out. This way you know you have full contact, full full coverage, full everything. Because what you want, the glue is kind of melting the plastic together to uh, bond the pieces together. So after it dries in sand, you kind of remove that all, remove that line completely because the plastic is now bonded into one solid piece. Then you want to do the same for this little guy here and here. Alright, after the glue is finished dry, we carry these awesome uh, God Hand sponges. Highly recommend because they last forever. And you get them from get them from nothing. So I'm gonna go in and carefully sand these edges here, here. Now, whenever you don't get with the sponges, you're gonna go in with some sandpaper. 
the Tamiya sandpaper, I highly recommend as well. So I put the arm together and it's just, I, like, I can understand why a lot of like the painted promotional photos just have seam lines everywhere because it is very hard to uh, remove a seam line and attach another part. You're kind of just locked into this. This is going to be one solid piece once you remove all the seam lines and take care of everything. Um, <clears throat> and I am removing all seam lines, I have to. I just my thing. But uh, like I can't cut any parts or slide things in later. You just gotta start from the beginning. So what you're gonna have to do is seam line remove all this first, clean it, then attach it to the arm, then remove that seam line, clean it, then after that's done, take care of this one. So it's a timely process. So let's get going on this one. All right, on to the next puzzle the shoulder. As you can see it's a big seam line, you gotta get rid of it. And uh, you got a piece that gets locked in here if you do. So, there's a way around it. The shoulder, the red shoulder detail, we're gonna just trim these parts like so. So, you don't want to cut all the way down because you still want a little bit of like, uh, a little bit there just so it can hug onto the uh, holes. I'm using my handy dandy Gun the Planet 1.0 nippers, which held up very well in the past few years. Alright, so here we go. See, it goes in. And these will line up good, and you're not splitting this open, because you really don't want to ruin your seam lines when you work on it. There you go. That's it. So it'll be easier to paint this instead of masking. And if you want, you could just pop them out. Just pop them out. Easy to do. The next fun part, this is the bottom of the uh, leg. This is uh, a little quick and easy trick for you. So what you want to do is you want to clip these. Because once this will help a lot with seam line removal and painting. So do that. Just clip them. Like what I said earlier, you don't want to go all the way down. You want to leave a little meat in there for it to cling on to. Alright, just like that. Now, here's the bottom of the leg. You know, you got some awful seam right here. So, to help you, what you want to do is you want to open these up a lot. Actually, not a lot, just a little bit. I have the Tamiya Metal File from, the, from that Tamiya Metal File 3 pack. Very easy to find. And I just want to open it a little, like so. Alright. It's a little different because you don't need that much, you just need a little bit. So what you want to do is you want to slide these two pieces into each other like so. Okay, click into there, click into there. See that? There you go. Kind of click in, and there you go. It won't come apart. You could dab a little glue in here if you want to seal it. But uh, yeah, so this will help you separate the parts so easier to paint. Because uh, I plan on doing a, a texture finish to all these all these blue parts. So I really want to keep these uh, red parts separate. I want to keep them smooth. I just want to focus on texture and the blue. All right, now it seems like every part of this model is just going to be one thing after another. So here's the ankle that you're going to have to remove the seam line with. And this locks, if you look, these lock into here. Then you would have to mask and find a way to paint around this. So like before, just going to trim these. This part's going to be a little loose on you, but don't worry about it, because once you set it in place with some uh, really strong glue, when you finish it, it won't move. So that goes in. That's it. So, let that, so instead of masking this off and dealing with this, you can just have it separated. 
All right, now, now let's. All right, now let's take a look at this big, awesome part. Um, so there's no seam lines, but there are four mold lines. You have one here, one here, and two here. So I already removed these. So now I'm going to show you what I do here. I have a really worn out uh, 240 grit Conan uh, sponge. I've used all the time. Uh, it's worn out enough where it won't scratch this too much and it's easy to clean up. But it helps just to get rid of stubborn uh, mold line because these mold lines are a pain, pain in the ass. So I'll just go ahead. And don't worry about scratching the plastic too much because you're going to clean that up with some 400 grit sponge, 600 grit sponge, finish it off with 800 or 1000. Oh, you know what's pretty funny about this? Take a look at these gouge marks. Here and here. I didn't do that. That was caused by the factory because they set this separately. So they really go in and dig in there. Look at that. Wow. You really got to putty that back to normal. Oh, look, I didn't even realize that until I started sanding. Oh, for shame, water ride. For shame. Alright, these little gun turns that go on his waist, it looks pretty shallow, the barrel. So, I have these Mr. Hobby pin vise set. And, uh, what you want to do is kind of aim for there. And you just want to drill out the center. But carefully that you don't move your fingers too much around, you know, side to side. Because you don't want this to drill through the sides of the barrel. Just the center. A little more. There we go. Much better. Kind of see the difference. See? World of difference. All right, here's the current situation. Seam line count. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. That's 34 seam lines you have to repair on this model. Um, I've built a lot of vintage models and there's not that many. I mean, there's a lot of masking with vintage models, but this is a 30 something seam lines for a new model. I can see why a lot of people are turned off by motoroids when it comes to building and painting. I'm not gonna lie. That is time very time consuming. Even like, even the finished work, even the modelers that are hired to paint this that work for the company, they didn't even remove the seam lines. They probably said, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> so, they said, you know, it's pretty crazy. But even like when you're building it, it kind of like, it's like, oh yeah, just leave that there. But it does look, it looks pretty, you know, nothing. I hate seam lines in my models. Cause look at the fin, like this, like uh, this rendering photo. I'm like it looks so much better if it was smooth. So yeah, you really, you really do got to remove your seam lines up for this. But if you use the, that little, all the tricks I just showed you, it's going to go together pretty smoothly. You just have to start by sanding these guys first and then build, build the next step, then seam line. It's just, the tricks I showed you are going to help you uh, build it with minimal masking. That's what I tried to go for, minimal masking. If I could get around it, I, I do try. So let me go ahead now. 
and finish sanding all these and then I could you know start seam line and seam line removal on the next parts then I'll show you guys the next step All right, so here's the deal with this model. If you don't like sanding, sanding, and sanding, and sanding, you will not like this model, because all you do with this model is sand and surface prep, if you want it to look really nice. If not, it's the model for you. But if you want to make it look good, this has more seam lines than any other model I've ever built. And trust me, i built a lot. And, when it, and I built a lot of vintage kits, and even vintage kits, they don't have this much. <laughs> this is unreal. Then again, Polaroid models, they're awesome, but they're known for their seam lines, so keep that in mind. Here's a stubborn piece. Uh, in between every, you know, rivet, there's a mold line. Uh, quick way to do it, just get, make sure you have a nice sharp blade on. Just lightly scrape, you know. To scrape it off. Okie doke, look at this. Giant robo. All prepped and ready to go. Um, yeah, right off the bat, it's big. He's very big. Uh, I remember reading that he was supposed to be big, and he's about nine, about nine inches. Uh, and yeah, that's very impressive. He's very impressive looking. He does definitely has a nice uh, stance to it. And um, not really the most posable. You know, don't, you know, it's... I mean, you could get some cool stances out of him if you really tried. If you really want, like, something crazy. I'm sure it's possible. But, uh... I'm still debating on how we want to display this at the store. I'm sure it's gonna... I'm sure we're gonna do the big bazooka mode. Because, uh, this back... You have to like detach this back piece, detach this back piece, and you set it forward, and then acts as a cannon and extends. It's very cool. So if it comes right out, and then you attach this separate piece that you build right here. All right, kind of cool. Then you get attach that back. Just kind of slides in like so. So what you do is then you attach this piece to here. This pops out and extends, and this piece slides onto here like that, okay? Then what you wanna do is you take off the cap and you can replace it with the gun barrel. Now you got the gun barrel. Now what you wanna do is put this here. You take off this front red armor part, piece then you attach this piece 
which has all these nice little details to it, which I might use. This slides in like there. Okay. Now we're ready to display it. So yeah, you can pretty much display them with this giant bazooka. He has some really nice interchangeable hands, very detailed, uh, very large, very large. Uh, I like him a lot. He's a lot, a lot better than I thought. Uh, you just gotta get used to the um, the seam lines, man. That's the biggest part of this model. And let's see. So he has like a nice cannon right there. And then the really cool part about this model is you can actually change his head out. I mean, you change out this collar, this golden collar on top. It's a collar, and you could put this little Daiso Daisako. Daisaku, uh, I forget to pronounce his name correctly, right there, which is really cool because I thought you would have to either like mount him on somehow or glue him on, but they give you two collars, one where it actually is meant to hold him, and it's actually very easy to change out. And then you can kind of put him there, that's it. Now, I think if you paint that up nice, you're gonna get a really cool display. I'm liking it a lot. So, next, I'm gonna slap some primer on him and see what else happens. Here's a little technique I do. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people do this, but I'm sure what I do. Uh, this is just for initial primer, uh, just so you find imperfections. Like, I already see ones popping up over here, but this is really gonna show me everything else I need to do before I can really start painting. Just a quick, quick spray with some thousand surfacer. This is like a light coat. I'm not looking for coverage. I'm just looking for imperfections to uh, show up. This helps a lot with, uh, just like, I don't know, just helps. This is the first coat of primer, it's just not, it's like light, not full covered. This helps you find any imperfections when it comes to fixing your seam lines or any dents in the plastic, anything like that. Alright guys, here's a trick I'm going to show you. We're going to rescribe some panel lines here, just so when we do our panel lining towards the end, uh, it flows more smoothly. Uh, this is a Mr. Hobby uh, scriber, 0.3. And then we're gonna go ahead and then kind of go in at our angle. Now we're gonna go in and then we're gonna open it up like this. All right? And if you see, that's gonna be our panel line. That's without it. So when we use our uh, panel wash, um, the paint is going to go in smoothly and you're not going to have to fight it. Uh, I recommend doing this for every model you can, especially if you're painting. Because uh, sometimes you might have a heavy hand when it comes to painting. And uh, your paint builds up these corners too much and it's going to make it really hard to uh, use your wash. So one nice example I did was, like say under here, I, res I scribed this line here because there uh, there was no line but when you put a panel line here it's gonna look it's a nice uh, accent for it go ahead and look at all your fingers and then you're gonna see that there's these little lines here and then you see here where there was uh, a seam line you lost some of the detail you kind of just want to get your panel line I mean your scriber and open this up a little just like so okay easy and one important piece to do it to is the head. The head had no uh, panel lines at all, so like the color separation will kind of just smear together. I went ahead and rescribed everything with the uh, point three, and uh, it's gonna look really nice when I start uh, washing. You know, I'll show you 
Hold on. But it's gonna look really good when I start washing. It's gonna look good. All right, I'm just looking for imperfections. Like I have this little dent right there, probably from seam line removal that I missed. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and slap some lacquer putty on it. I'm using Finisher's lacquer putty. You can use any lacquer putty, but uh, I prefer Finisher's. I'm gonna go ahead and prime all my blue pieces now. This just to 1200. Alright, I'm going to start the pre-shading. Right now, I'm going to use navy blue to pre-shade all the blue parts. Now I'm going to start the main blue, I'm using Azure Blue, it's very nice. Go ahead and fill in the area uh, where you didn't appreciate with the blue, and then we're going to go ahead and then give it a full coverage after we finish this step. Alright, this step what I'm doing now is I'm just blending the colors together. I'm just giving a quick coverage with the Azure Blue to uh, blend in the pre-shade with the main color.
go ahead and start my modeling effect, which I guess you could call it that. I mean, it's an attempt. I, with this, I'm using Mr. Color 392, which is like Soviet blue. It's like a lighter blue. What you kind of want to do is just go quick and easy. Just like spray little circles around. Have full control on your paint. No splatter, really. Just uh, kind of stipple it all over your colors. And it's going to act and it's going to create a nice, nice effect with the paint. So go ahead and do this with the entire uh, model that you painted blue. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and do the same process, but this time I'm using the same color, but I added a little bit of white to it to act as another type of shade. Just go ahead and stipple it on and just kind of fill in the other, other areas. Uh, you get the idea. Now I'm repeating the same process for the third time. I think this time I mixed in a little bit of black and gray to give it another tone. And once again, do it again. Same process. It's a, It takes up a lot of time, but uh, the results are worth it.
now for this process. Pay attention to what I'm going to tell you. You have to take your first color, the azure blue, and you want to thin it down a lot, like a lot, a lot. Basically, what you're going to try to do now is blend all the colors together. And with the paint very thin down, it acts more like a clear coat in a way, where there's barely any paint coming out. It's mostly just like the thinner. But if, if you look, it blends in the colors all together. Uh, this can absolutely ruin the entire paint job if you don't pay attention or be careful. And you want to do this just like how I do it, nice and quick and easy. But you want to do it with all the blue parts. So take your time with this process. Remember to thin down that paint a lot till it's pretty much clear, uh, clear consistency. But you still get that blue tint. That's what you want. See? Look at that. Now that all the blue parts have been uh, dried and ready to go, I'm just gonna final look at them. They look really nice. All right, so now I gotta go ahead and start masking some of these pieces. Um, I have to start prepping for the red. So remember all that all that work I did earlier to help mask it. A lot of the red is already separated. I just have to mask around here. Save this, and I think that's it. Oh, and the uh, and the head. Go ahead and mask that up. Alright, now I'm going to show you guys my next technique I plan on using for this build. Um, this is going to be an effect you can use on a lot of models. This mostly came from uh, people who build tanks. This is like a armor, an armor technique, but this helps a lot. Surfacer 500. It's thick. Surfacer 500 is very thick. Um, this is a, a technique a lot of Gundam builders use on Zaku's, Votan builders. They use this like on every part. Uh, I plan on using this on every part that is red. What you want to do is you directly take the paint out of the bottle. You don't even thin it or anything. And then what you want to do is this is going to prime and add texture. You kind of stipple it on like this. You see? And you want to get full coverage. That's all you have to do. Keep going, keep replacing the brush. It's alright, it's alright if it's thick, because uh, the more uneven areas the better. This is going to add as a uh, texture base for when you apply the red, it's going to look like a mechanic, of, like a more of a hammered effect. You see how that looks? There you go, see that? That looks pretty cool. You can use this on Zaku's shoulders, they look nice, Zaku's shields, uh, ground, even like maybe try a Gundam shield or get some uh, OFMS team stuff and slap this all over it. I think this is a great technique, very simple to do. Every, anyone could do this. All you need is a bottle of 500 surfacer and a nice flat brush helps a lot. So, we'll keep going with this. And we're gonna cover every single red part. Maybe not the head, because I'll leave the head a little smoother, but I'm gonna do the rest. All right. It's thick enough, you don't have to worry about it flowing into this uh, masked area. You have plenty of control over this. Try not to get this area, because I'm going to paint this a separate color. Just 
focus on the red. Finish applying the primer, it's already dry. Kind of get the idea how that looks like. I also did do it on the head anyway, just to match with the rest of the reds. I think it looks pretty cool. So let me go ahead and slap a base coat of red and we'll get going. I'm gonna go ahead and start my pre shading on the red. I like to use Russet, uh, helps a lot with uh, building up reds. Very nice color. and start brightening up this red color. I'll probably switch back to GX red just to uh, kind of give it a nice tone because uh, I think that's a really good color to use. So that's what you're seeing right now. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and do the final step on the red, just a uh, final tone, shine red, can't go wrong with that one, that's a great red to use for this, for this step. Well, now that the red is dry, let's go ahead and unmask this so we can continue to the next step. two textures and the two uh, applications. They look really good together. I am liking this a lot. Oh, look at that. Man, that looks good. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. That looks awesome. 
Alright, so I got the little touch up here, but that's not bad. That's, that's like the, the least of my concerns. This is looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and start hand painting the, uh, kind of like the joints. I think I'm using Zendra, Zendar Tree Dust from Citadel. Yeah, it's a nice color, but, uh, yeah, it's okay. This was easy. And right here I'm just going ahead and I'm going to apply a wash all over the uh, parts I just hand painted to give it a little more of a tone. A little detail work, it's easy, all easy stuff. Alright, I painted all the inner joints with just like an olive brown mix. Just go in there and slap it in, just make sure you don't get any paint spilled all over. If not, you can clean it off easily. Um, <clears throat> I do recommend this. If you do what I've been showing you, you don't have to paint this. What you should do is mask it and use the plastic that's already come with because this scrapes easily. So when I put my top coat on, I'm gonna have to make sure I really layer it up because this scrapes very easily. But like after I removed the seam line and cleaned it, you wouldn't even tell that I was painted or not. But anyway, now I'm gonna just glue this together. All you do is you see this little spot here? This is some CA glue that you can get, you know, it gets a bottle of Loctite. Loctite works. You know, CA glue is very strong. You don't have to worry about anything. So just dab a little here, dab a little there. Now that shit ain't coming off. Let that dry. This dries in like a couple, maybe a couple minutes. That'll be rock hard. That won't come out. Do that with the other leg, and then we'll go on to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and slap some uh, gloss coat onto all my painted parts to start with the weathering. Uh, GX100, can't go wrong, gloss coat your entire model. time it is, it's panel lining time. I use that thick ass Tamiya panel, uh, panel line, you know, the normal stuff. It's okay stuff. Uh, I like to thin it down a little more with the enamel thinner. And then uh, this is what I use to clean it up. And I wasn't really too like uh, careful about this process because I was weathering it to begin with. So if it looked a, looks a little messy, it's kind of intentional. So. You get the idea.
Alright, for the next step, I'm going to show you guys a nice weathering trick. Uh, pretty classic. We'll get yourself some enamel black. And you want to thin it, but not too much. You, you want it to be able to flow pretty nicely. You don't want it to be too thick where it kind of stains the part. Uh, you're going to use this to, for weathering. Just, uh, you want this type of consistency. And now what I'm doing is, I'm kind of taking a rag uh, and just pull down, just going down. Like if it were to have streak marks, you just do what I do and you get a pretty nice streaking effect going on. Uh, it's pretty simple. And then you can just keep repeating the process until you pump, until you like uh, your results. Pretty easy. Gonna go ahead and add some uh, weathering to the feet to make it look like it was like, you know, a little muddy. Uh, it's pretty nice stuff to use. It's pretty simple to do. Not too bad. Oh man, now the fun time. Painting eyes. Yep, it's just like painting a figure with the eyes. Do it all by hand. Kind of follow my process, kind of go back and forth until it's nice and clean. I'm probably using an off-white. And then I'll probably throw in a shade to like give it a nice cover. And then I was looking at like reference photos of like what, eye, what color are his eyes. Uh, I think I went with a dark green. You just take your time with this. And if it looks messy, just go ahead and wipe it off. Keep doing it until you get a, uh, a result kind of like that. So that's after I apply the shade, and that kind of like blend everything in. And I go ahead and I lighten it back up with the base color, which was like that off-white. And then take your time with this, you know. And I'm sorry that I get I didn't record most of it because when it comes to painting eyes, it just takes forever. time it is time to seal up everything call it call it done with the base colors for giant robo and i like using gx smooth uh clear i think smooth is great for anime colors and great for anime looking things it just books well, looks really good after it's covered
base color, well, the, the main colors are done. I'm moving on to the metallic parts. Um, now I'm painting everything with a nice black primer. I'm going to go ahead and use probably the Mr. Metal color. What I like about Mr. Metal Color, it's kind of like a buff paint, where you kind of just don't have to top coat it. You spray it on, it comes out dull, but just hit it with a rag, and you get like a nice shine to it, and you get a nice like weathered look as well. And uh, yeah, don't top coat this. Leave it just as is. It's a very nice paint.
gloss to the eyeballs. Uh, and that's a nice effect to it. Pretty simple. Move on to the characters. And now I'm going to start with Jinrei. So let's go ahead and clip her out. All right, here's what you're gonna to wanna to do next. You see this little tab right here? Just, I'm gonna trim that off. Now that should be able to go in, no problem. Yep, perfect. Same with the head. You see this little tab? It wants it wanted you to put the legs and the head inside the dress and glue it together. Then it would be really hard for uh, part separation and uh, painting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim these extra tabs off. Like so. She needs to put her arms on first. Oh, her arms are tight, so I don't have to worry about her arms falling off. figure. Pretty cool model. This is a pretty nice detailed figure. Looking forward to starting to paint her up.
now the fun st now the fun spot. Uh, painting skin. You know, if you've watched my videos, you know how much I love painting skin. Uh, I kept these two pretty simple. I've used the Mr. Color Kyoto skin set. I'm sure this was the pale orange on a white base. And I just used whatever I had laying around to make the skin tones. I uh, paid more attention to painting Jinrei more, because obviously she was nothing but legs in the entire show. And, uh, yeah, easy. I, well, for her, I did the paint base. For the male, I do the orange base. Uh, it was pretty simple. Just, if I were you, if you want to paint these guys quickly, just grab that set. Just follow their instructions. It's very easy. Well, we start on a white base. And then you shade the areas pink or orange. And then fill in with the other skin tone. This is probably like milky peach or whatever it's called. I just repeat this process. Pretty simple. I'm going back and forth. Pretty easy. You get used, you trust me, you get used to painting skin. I'm going ahead. I've been uh, hand painting a lot of the details, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you another trick we got. So he has this orange stripe right along here. Uh, pretty tricky if you try to like mask that and paint it. So what you can do is use uh, orange enamel paint, 
and it's the same thing it's, we're going to be doing a reverse wash so go ahead and lay this on don't worry about it being too messy and globby and uneven because we're going to go ahead and clean that up pretty easily we're just going to go ahead and try to get the paint in to that recessed area as thick as possible so it covers that completely and then we'll go ahead and reverse wash i mean if you really wanted to you could spray this also, but I'm just hand painting it right now, so it's not so bad. All right, got the enamel thinner on here. You go ahead and you just wipe away. This is why a gloss coat, it does help a lot. Doing this on flat paint, it won't work. You need a gloss. All right, so I went ahead and I hand painted all the details. It was pretty easy. Nothing too, nothing too crazy. She comes with a water side decal for a rose, but uh, the part, the piece is, the piece is raised, so it's easy to hand paint. together some of the parts <clears throat> that go on pretty well I don't have to glue those parts but the rest I'm gonna have to glue together uh, so what you want to do you know get some nice gel glue and uh, kind of just apply it on top of the q-tip so you have more control and uh, I recommend gel glue for this point because you really want full control you don't want any spillage or anything to ruin your paint job so This is one step I think that is like way too hard for me to record even with my setup because my setup isn't that uh, great but hand painting something this small it's not so bad as long as you have good brushes it's not so bad just going ahead and add in a layer when working with something this small you really want to you really, really, really want to look out for the lighter colors. You don't want your colors to cross paths because to fix that, it's going to be really tough. I'm not too worried about getting it on the shorts because the shorts are the darker brown, uh, easy to cover uh, lighter colors. I'm just more careful around the skin and the white shirt. All right, Daisaku is all done. What a chore, but he's done. I'm gonna hit him with some top coat and then seal in the paint. I'm like, I'm sorry I didn't show you guys the detail work, but you have to like really pay attention. And the, there is a watch and there is a tiny little silver dot for the, the bezel. And it was just, it, it's done. Let's put it that way, it's done. So now top coat sealing and then Giant Robo is done. Isn't that fun? I hope my I hope showing you guys what I did, you know, get an idea. Maybe if you want to paint one. You know. It's a little bit of work. This guy took me about two weeks to finish. Oh 
All right, giant robo is finally done. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. He looks awesome. He's very big, very intimidating, and he is awesome. Look at that. And there's a uh, my little thing. Daisaku, Daisaku, whatever his name was, right there, all painted, ready to go. Um, so, so yeah, pros, he's a big model, cons, he's a lot of work. Um, you know, you saw what I was going through, it takes a lot to get him going. Uh, if you want him to look like this, it's going to be a lot of work. Um, I, I finished painting him in one week, and then uh, I was busy the next, second week, but I was able to knock out the characters. Speaking of, here we go. We have our 120 scale uh, Daisaku, Daisaku, Seiko, I don't know, I probably messed that up. And our 120 Jinrei. I believe Giant Robo, maybe 144 scale. He's very large. But uh, yeah, these came out pretty nice. I enjoy painting them. I love models that come with figures because I like painting the figures. And uh, I feel like the Bandai would go back to the way it used to be when they used to come with 120 figures and make them plastic not that soft rubber rubber stuff they used to do that'd be really nice so yeah they look great together i enjoyed it very much all right so let's talk a little more about the model the finished model um it could barely move i, I, I think you've figured that out if you watch the show, which I actually finished it while painting this, the show was awesome. And uh, he barely moves. He's actually barely in the show. <laughs> it's a short of it's a short six part OVA or so or so or eight episode OVA, I forgot, but uh it's very good. And uh, and the scenes he's in it, it's awesome. It's really good. So his head does move, that's about it. When he's attached. He can't really move. Um, he does move his arms and stuff. Not not too much. The arms do come out, but you have to like, pull down and roll them up so you don't scratch anything. It's very annoying, but that's about it. Uh, his hands <laughs> rotate. Okay. Uh, his knees do bend, but he doesn't really move. He doesn't really... The whole show, he's pretty much just standing like this, unless he uses his... Uh, it's nuke cannon thing going on here, which is pretty cool. Which I got all the parts for. So the back of this looks really good. Um, I enjoyed it. The back of this looks pretty cool. He looks very strong, very intimidating. Uh, I hope my paint, I think my paint came out okay. And uh, let's see, let's see what else it came with. So it comes with a separate collar. So you can, this one has an attachment for Daisaku. It means they're easy to pop on and off. We got parts for the back can, shoulder cannon. Some hands. Bunch of hands. And more parts for the shoulder cannon. So let's go ahead and set that up. All right, and there you go. There's a shoulder cannon. Not not too hard to uh, transform. Pretty cool. Uh, you could detail this up a little more if you wanted to. Make it a little more, you know, put more metallics in it. I, I just went around and kind of just knocked, just put through paint where I believe paint should have belonged. Uh, went more mechanical, a little gold, a little silver, nothing crazy. And yeah, this is him. He's looking cool. I like it a lot. <sighs> Alright, let me sound a little more enthusiastic about this. I like, I really did enjoy painting this model. I'm really enjoying these Motorade models when I get my hands on them. Uh, they are a lot of work. A lot of people complain about them, but, you know, it's like what, you know, it's an old saying, effort in, results out. So, if you want to become a better builder, painter, maybe this is the way to go.